Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, my guest is Steffi Bao of Init Esports. Our topic is the metaverse, the future of esports. Welcome, Steffi. Hello, Catherine. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, to have a very good conversation today. <laughs> All right, we'll dive right in. What is the metaverse? Everyone's been hearing about this. Well, it's definitely like a word that has been tossed around a lot, like as you said, and everybody has a little bit of a different um, definition for it. I can tell you what I think the metaverse is. The metaverse is an opportunity to do things in the right way. What I mean by that is that uh, the metaverse concept is a, a word, a digital word, where people can transform themselves and transport themselves into it. And by being in there, you can uh, recreate the world in a way. And um, it's like limitless. Right now, the possibility are like, you, if you can dream it, you can achieve it in the metaverse. And uh, it's very cool. A lot of people are putting effort into it. And um, I'd like to talk more about it. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to having the most amazing avatar ever in the metaverse. Um, so why is it important to esports? Well, in a way, esports is kind of like a lead up into the metaverse, because if you think about esports, there is a lot of opportunities in the way of gaming, you know, and participation and the professional gaming, and it's all digital. So people, they are really involved with uh, esports, they already are familiar with this type of technology and this type of uh, um, way of seeing a digital world like the games that they are very much into the um, the fantasy that is also like a sort of a metaverse right because it's a fantasy world where you go in there and play so esport is teaching us the basic of what it could be a metaverse world again a lot of people think of the metaverse as this uh, word out there they don't know what it is and that that's totally correct you don't know what it is because we are just in the infancy and everybody's trying to understand it and figure it out way out to participate sure and i think that uh, people who are engaged with esports are, would be early adapters because uh -huh. they are used to being in different kinds of fantasy worlds and they're used to operating an avatar and creating avatars. Um, why do you think that the metaverse is such a hot topic right now? Well, I would say that it is a hot topic because it became way, way more public, you know, with Facebook turning to be meta now, a lot of more people are starting to hear this kind of word. But also, as I said, I think it's a natural evolution from the popularity of esports. Esports is growing, it's becoming more and more a concept that is uh, into household. People understand that there is competitive game and those fantasy games. So it kind of like link completely together. So the word metaverse now is coming to everybody uh, household and everybody's taking an interest in it. So what led you to get involved with esports? Well, my story is that I am Italian and I was a little girl that I had a dream to become a professional motorcycle racer. I was able to achieve that. I was able to um, um, bring home three world titles and then kind of like taught me the aspect of what it is to live the athletic life, like as a professional level. I got hurt because it happens in sport. So I had to kind of like move from one side of the fence to the other side of the fence. So I ended up starting working into the motorsport industry. A couple of years ago, I was in Italy visiting my family and all of a sudden, and I noticed my niece that she was spending three to four hours a day watching people playing video games. And I'm like, what's going on? I come from a generation, you know, where parents would like go outside, play, you know, and I did my entire life as an athlete. And it was like a foreigner concept to me. So, but it was intriguing. And I decided to dive in, learn as much as I could and put my passion, which is motorsport, together with this world of esport. So that's what, how I got involved, uh, how I started to explore. And for me, because um, 
motorsport and motorcycling it's a it's a it's a passion of mine but at the same time it's very real in the esport world as well because if you drive a sim like a simulator you know like everybody's been in a car or most people have been has been in a car so therefore it's easier to understand than showing to somebody like a legal legend or a fortnite competition so that's how i got involved and i love it all right and tell us about in it esports and we can show your um website which like i i've said <laughs> I uh, could probably watch that for hours. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, of course, so the website reflected the passion, you know, like a car and motorcycle. And there are games out there that uh, are very, very technological events that, uh, especially the car game, where uh, you can actually look at the game now and schools can use these particular games to be able to teach math and physics because they are so detailed that it's like out of this world like you can create engineer to from gaming right so be able to capture the interest from people that they are going to school and they wanted to entertain that type of career um in it esport now is a company that does a special events with the, um with the uh, sim racing why special events because if you know a little bit about esports there is tons of uh, competition out there and tournaments so me coming in only a couple years ago i saw there was almost like already saturated you know so i am a person that really like to creativity to reinvent things so i'm like okay we're gonna do special events instead so special events are all based on the fact of bringing people again that they are not necessarily involved with this sport to bring them toward the esport industry and we're doing that with sim and as i just said the sim is relatable because everybody's been in the car so the conversation is very easy to to start all right so let's show the video yes Race me by Inner Esports is championing diversity, inclusion, and equality with a unique event. Right off the bat, though, because I'm clearly confident here. 23 is Ariel Powers in the blue car. But oh, look at this! I actually think Madison is getting a little bit um, more confident. Great practice session for Madison Packer. A lot of confidence, which is key. You may have missed the appropriate corner here. Liv Morgan, uh, gonna gonna turn around here. Oh, you know what? We'll figure it out. Wow, what a practice session. How did it go? I think it went pretty well. It went good. Apparently, this is not supposed to do this. Hopefully, I get some beginner's luck. First half, I practiced for like <laughs> one day. I'm like, let me just race you to figure it out. Good luck, everyone. For this, we're actually seeing some, some fighting going on. We're seeing some great racing, you really are. Done. Fastest in practice, fastest in qualifying. The cars are gridded. It looks like green flag is in the air. Already three and four. Oh. Rachel, it didn't take long here. Oh, and we are all over the place. Now your running order, Ariel is currently your leader. We've got them regrouped. They're coming to the green flag once again. This is the exciting part of each race. With the green flag in the air, they're all gonna go sailing into turn one. Oh, melee already happening here. See, we wanna see a few scratches of what the ladies are doing. This is, this is stressful. I believe we're coming to the end of the race as well. And that would be it right there. I believe Madison Hammond just crossed the start finish line. Winning the inaugural race me event. Fantastic. Sorry everyone uh, for watching. Well done. All right, Steffi, tell us about that video. Yes, so this was Race Me, which was an event where we put athletes and gamer for diversity and inclusion. So the concept was uh, to show and demonstrate that people, if they come from sports or for in reality, any 
in career or in the walk on life, they can come together and have a blast, you know, by playing on a sim. I mean, we did the sim because it's relatable, as we said uh, multiple times now, but it, it was a super interesting the event because we had those professional women athletes. We, there was Hope Solo, Ariel Power, um, Oksana Master. So all of them have a, a story behind, like Hope is a mom, Oksana is a designer, disabled athlete, um, um, Ariel is African-American. So really to demonstrate that everybody can play and have fun together in eSport. So um, these are the special events that we bring to the public to, to see that we can all play together. In this particular one, it was funny because we needed to have NASCAR, race NASCAR drivers to be the coach of those girls because they are incredibly good in what they do, like soccer or basketball or the Olympics. But when they, they put it in the car, it was powerful because you see the emotion that, you know, like I want to win, but it was their first time. So the NASCAR driver, they jumped in and they were the coaches and create this whole feel good um, event. And it was very powerful to put different industry together and demonstrate that esports is for everyone. So as an athlete yourself, how does the skill being a traditional athlete translate to esports? Well, it does translate, especially mentally, believe it or not. Like when you are a professional athlete, mentally, you have so much pressure on you because you need to perform. And this is exactly the same thing that happens in gaming. Like when you reach the professional level in gaming, when you're going to be doing real uh, competition with big prizes involved, is the same kind of mentality. It's exactly what a professional athlete goes through. And uh, to say it, we actually were able to demonstrate through Race Me because Herio at one point say, oh my God, I, I didn't even blink once which is like something that during sports, sometimes, you know, you forget to breathe or you forget to blink. So it was very, very the same um, feeling. Same with Hope. She said, I'm sweating so much that I feel like when I was in the changing room before the World Cup final, her heartbeat was so like up there. So those by hearing from the athlete, it's so cool because I demonstrate once again, the eSport is actually physical, even though you don't move around necessarily, but it takes so much concentration, then you need to really be in top shape to be able to perform at the top level. Sure. And, you know, sometimes I think that, you know, someone who's actually driving a race car, it's like all they're doing is sitting in there and <laughs> they're driving a car. But I do understand that that is very physically taxing. Is that your understanding? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I come from the world motorcycle. So in that way, you kind of have to wrestle around the motorcycle. You know, so you have to be able to move around 250 pounds of, of weight in the car. Yes, you are sitting in it, but there is a lot of component, like back to the concept of the physical math. Like when you go fast around the corner, you're going to get the G-force effect. So your body needs to be strong enough to sustain that force. So not a lot of people know that until they try. And, uh, you know, don't do this on the regular street, but if you ended up going into a racetrack just to have a possibility to try it, you will see that it's very physical. So I could see having, you know, sim type things in the metaverse and mm -hmm. that people could be driving race cars through the metaverse. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, like, because that's my lane, it is absolutely what I would like to see, but not only, you know, competing, in, so taking it even another step, right? So right now we are watching people playing in video games. That would be watching people in a new world playing, you know, like a, a digital sport. So, you know, like it would be super cool to see racing, but it can also be taken in a different way. The metaverse can become a possibility for kids to learn to drive. You know, like they can learn, go in there, have a, a sort of real life experience in a safe environment because they could potentially crash the car, but not, you know, hurt anybody or themselves. So it can transform in so many different ways. So that person maybe in, a, in, in the metaverse will be able to learn how to drive and then participate in a 
event in the metaverse and continue the career. Do you think that um, other skills beyond driving could be um, taught and learned in the metaverse? Oh, absolutely. I think especially math and physics can be another thing that can be taught in the metaverse. You know, you can have a um, professor that they can make um, a lesson into the metaverse and people in the metaverse can actually do experiment in there. In a way, I like to think it's almost an extension of what um, he's been doing already. We are doing for NASA, for instance, in the space station. The experiment have been made up there. Now you can do experiment in the metaverse. So really like it, it can open up so many different things. And there is the beauty of it though, is that there is room for everybody. So if you are a creative person or you have an idea idea, the metaphor become your safe space to try it. Uh, thinking also in this way, if you have to create a product, right, and uh, you know all of the understanding of creating a product, but the expense to make it in real life, now you can make it in the metaverse and test it out there at a fraction of the time. And then if that is good, then you can decide to bring it back in the real world, or you can turn it into an NFT, sure. right? <laughs> All right. Well, you know, another thing that comes to mind is that we've come to um, find Zoom um, calls and, and, you know, other uh, uh, video conferencing uh, type platforms. We, we are doing that on a regular basis. And I wonder if we will move some of that, like school, work, and pleasure into the metaverse. What do you think? Well, you know, like I have a little bit of this idea and concept, which I don't know if it's really what we want to have as human being, but thinking in this way, we can kind of clone ourselves, right? So if we have another version of us in the metaverse, it can take on a bunch of things that maybe, you know, you don't have time to do in, in your real life, right? So in regards to business and meetings and all of that, you have your avatar that is like you, you know, and with the AI is going to just act like you, with times and then you have another version of you so you know it can go in so many different ways of course but um it could be definitely interesting to see how everything is going to evolve in there and absolutely having meetings in the metaverse world yes it's definitely going to happen right and you know we have seen things like minecraft okay mm -hmm. and um teaching opportunities and i could see where in a the metaverse the classroom could go back to a place in history and yes. actually kind of experiment like their avatars could even be a historical figure what do you think about that Yes, I, I, like I said at the very beginning of our conversation, I think we're going to discover that uh, we will have a chance to kind of re replay history, but do it better and hopefully learn from the past and get a chance to do it in a new way. You know, and everybody together, I like very much the word, um, the hashtag word connected. We are all a word connected with each other and uh, we can we can all try to do good, uh, which is something that unfortunately sometimes we have forgot throughout the history of times but hopefully you know with a new opportunity right there starting blank we might have a possibility to do it right from the get-go sure and i would think that this that it could you know you talk about the world together and um when we're talking about diversity and and understanding each other's cultures i could also see that we could um, actually experience other cultures in the metaverse. Um, Absolutely. I, it can be it can be also another a new way to travel. Thinking in that way, you know, like you would be able to travel in different countries, you know, and be able to learn that culture and maybe even pick the era of the culture, right? Because the metaphor is not linear, you know, it can be different eras. So you can travel and then learn, you know, as much as you can, you know, by just having those kind of experience. I guess my, my biggest desire from all of this is that it really becomes like the internet though. I will hate to see if there is a, a company that is gonna wanna uh, own this 
that would be taking away the freedom that the metaverse is as set to to be like so let's just hope that you know we're gonna all work together to try to keep this for everybody instead of like a managed by somebody sure and I do understand that a number of companies are working to create it. Um, uh, what what uh, information do you have on that? Well, what I'm learning is that because it's a business opportunity, right? So, so if you can sell in, uh, let's say, 1,000 real shop, now all of a sudden you have a 1,000 digital shop. As a business, you have doubled your uh, possibility to generate income. So I see the business side, but I think that if we have a party only that controls all of this, then it's not, it's not anymore the decentralized um, world that the metaphors is supposed to set up to be. It becomes just like one company or one government, you know, like taking all of this into consideration and dictate everything. I hope that the shaker and the movers right now, you know, they are in the metaverse, they are working, they are going to work very hard to make not that make it to happen and just keep it free and open for everybody. And then, yes, you know, like you can come in, participate, create your own business and, and go on, you know, with, um, with what you believe, but it has to be open kind of like the crypto universe right so everything is open everybody can participate and it's not owned by a single entity will brands benefit from the metaverse absolutely the same comes i just said you know like if you are a brand that is in the real world right now and they're going to move into the metaverse all of a sudden it's almost like you have double the opportunities you know to bring your product your idea or your concept whatever it is into a new world i will see like with time they're going to be branded just going to be born into the metaverse they're going to just live there you know, and that is like the youngest kid, you know, I think there, there will be the, the trendsetter to make that happen, you know, in the next 10, 15 years. So what do you think the biggest challenges are to the metaverse? I think it is still a conceptual um, argument right now. It's not this, because with people and human being, if you can touch it, it's difficult to uh, put it into word, right? Uh, no, I also put it into word, but like I uh, understand it. That's the right way to say it. So, you know, it's still kind of like an, an abstract concept at the moment, but more people talking about it, more people just brainstorming and say, I wonder what this could be. It's what is needed right now. So everybody, you know, they have a little bit of an interest, just go out to seek, you know, linking group, seek opportunity with uh, on Facebook on whatever, you know, like, and try to talk to other people that might be like, like-minded and understand what, what this can all turn out. There is not a, a book that says how this is going to be. So it's only up to us to try to make it in a way that, we think is going to be good for everybody. So, you know, I, I think it'll be interesting because there will be people that are native to the, the metaverse where they were, they were born after it was created. And that mm -hmm. is some, they don't even know what life is without the metaverse, but then you, you're going to have the non-native people and even the older generations that will just not get it and not understand how to, how to enter it or like what it is. Uh, thoughts on that? Well, you know, it's kind of like a, a way of how life is, right? I mean, there are kids nowadays that they, they never experience a phone with a dial like this, right? They, they don't know what that is. Right? So, you know, like it's, it's just, it's just like the natural life, you know, there is gonna, there's gonna always be evolution. We are going very fast, you know, because of technology and uh, it's gonna be interesting, but I think it's always important to look at the younger population because they are the trendsetter of the future. So therefore, you know, like uh, they are born, they will be born in the world where the metaverse is there and they're gonna be the one that they're gonna make uh, more differences and new things, you know, coming, coming uh, on and we're gonna still continue to learn and like everything in life if you are an early adopter you're gonna you know learn and be part of it and if you want to stay in your ways that's good too you know like nobody said that you have to be part of the metaverse if you don't want to sure well you know and and 
I'm sure a lot of people remember when there wasn't any microwaves or yeah. when there were black and white televisions and then before the internet and and like you said, a rotary phone and before we had everyone had a smartphone, you know, I mean, but what's interesting now is that technology is moving so along exponentially and very quick. And so do you, what do you think the impact of the metaverse will have on the kind of more two dimensional internet? Well, I don't really have the answer. If I would, you know, I would be like a millionaire because I would be able to predict the future. So I, I don't know. I mean, I really think that like everything in life, if you keep an open mind of what's happening and you listen, you know, that's the way, the best way to approach it. Whatever is going to happen, you know, on what we already know, I can tell, you know, but I think what is what the, the trend is going to be is like people are going to continue to learn and adapt. So whatever works in one dimension, let's call it, it might not work in the, in the metaverse and the other way around. But we're going to only discover it by keep doing and keep trying it. Sure. And do you think that the pandemic has influenced the growth of this or the inspiration to proceed with this? I think they made it faster. You know, like I think there were already people thinking about this concept, but they, it was kind of like there. But now, you know, because of the pandemic, everybody is, was at home. It was like a, such important time in history because people really needed to reinvent themselves, you know? So therefore it kind of spearheaded this new concept, but like, what if we are stuck at home? And that's why, you know, like people start dreaming of a different world where they can actually be at home by experiencing stuff that uh, they used to be doing in, in, in real life. So the metaverse is not gonna take away you know, from real life experience. We're not gonna see people just with a headset on a VR set and it's in blocks and that's it, no. You know, but it's gonna be an extra way to entertain and, and have experience and that you might not be able to do it, you know, in, in, in real life. Sure. What is next for Init Esports? Well, we have a, a quite a few things in the pipeline, but I'm not kind of ready yet to, to discuss it. So the best way it is uh, to follow us, you know, like uh, on the website, uh, you can uh, um, participate in the newsletter or uh, you can find me very active on LinkedIn. So if you go on linkedin.com uh, slash my name, Steffi Bao, I'm always there, you know, love to meet with people and talk to people and also Twitter. Of course, everybody is on Twitter. <laughs> So yes, so just follow follow us and uh, we're gonna come up with very cool uh, special events that I think you will like. All right, fantastic, Steffi. And I hope I actually see you in the metaverse one day. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, thank you for being my guest today. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be attorney Irene Skoll Tada Vassian. Uh, we'll talk about esports litigation. See you then.